Up until now, we've largely been working with HTML elements inside of the body tag. This time around, let's go ahead and cover some really important HTML elements that should actually go inside the head tag. I'm not gonna use live preview for this lesson because most of the elements in the head tag just won't show up on a browser, so it's not even worth it. One of the elements that we've covered and included in almost every single HTML file is the title. So for the title, I'm gonna say elements in the head. And now here's where things get interesting. In almost every single web page, you'll see something called a meta tag. And it turns out that even though you can't see the meta tag, meta tags play an important role in how search engines and web browsers display page results and markup. And the meta tag has two required attributes. One is the name of the meta tag, and then the second one is the content for the meta tag. So meta tags have two required attributes, the name and the content. And the name of the meta tag tells the browser or search engine what kind of meta tag it is. One important meta tag to know is the keywords meta tag. And the keywords meta tag is used by search engines like Google to quickly extract some keywords that describe the page. So since this page is about HTML, I'm gonna include HTML, web, course, as keywords within this meta tag. Note that the keywords are separated by commas, which is good practice and makes it easier for the crawler bots that crawl web pages to pick up. And similarly, when you search on Google or another search engine, you usually see a title followed by a description of the web page, right? So speaking of description, there's actually a meta tag for that and its name is description. And note that brackets will try to autocomplete certain fields for you as you're typing these meta tags. And the content, as you might imagine, is a description of the web page. And we can say, for content, this web page describes some common tags found in the head of an HTML page. And there are two more meta tags that are really important to know. And naturally, there are tons of meta tags, by the way. I just want to cover the four really important meta tags that you should include on every single web page. The next meta tag that's important to include can actually be written two different ways. Now, the first way, which is the HTML5 way to write it, is car set equals double quotes utf8 and note that brackets try to autocomplete that for you and what this tag does is it tells the browser to read the web page as a utf8 format utf8 is a special type of format for displaying text and it's the most flexible format with all kinds of different language support and special character support, you should be using UTF-8. The default setting for brackets down here is UTF-8, but you can see there are a lot of different other character formats too. And this tag is required. Now, in HTML4 and earlier, you might have seen this meta tag written as HTTP-equiv, meaning equivalent, and its property would be content type and instead of car set equals utf8 you would have seen content equals text slash html if you want to maintain html for an earlier version compatibility you can combine these two by removing this quote and this quote these two quotations and then adding a semicolon right here after text slash html However, by now, most web browsers that users have installed do support HTML5. I would say that's optional. It may be easier, especially if you're creating a new web page, to just have meta character set equals UTF-8. But again, for backwards compatibility reasons, you can also 
write the content type meta tag as this. Okay, next and final meta tag. And this is about mobile device support. This is the meta tag that Google uses to determine a very basic level of mobile support for your web page. In fact, if you don't include this meta tag, your web page will almost definitely be ranked lower on the search engine rankings compared to other web pages that do have this meta tag. And especially on mobile devices, don't even expect your web page to show up in the top 10 results if it doesn't have this tag. And this tag is the viewport tag. And for the content, you want to add something special. Width equals device dash width followed by a comma and then initial dash scale equals one. Now note that viewport is not in quotations because it is actually a global variable inside of HTML. And a discussion of variables is outside the scope of this course, but just know that when an HTML web page is created, there are certain variables like document and viewport that are automatically created by the web browser that we can call. For more information about this particular meta tag, I would recommend visiting Google's developer page that discusses this on HTTPS developers.google.com slash speed docs insights configure viewport. And again, this tag just provides your web page with a very, very basic level of mobile support. It doesn't provide mobile friendliness to the user at a really meaningful level. We're going to learn how to do that in the bootstrap section. Okay, so that's a discussion of meta tags that go inside the head. And it turns out something really interesting is that the title is also a meta tag. It's a very special type of meta tag that every single web page is required to have. But when you search on Google, the title of the search result of the page is actually what's displayed. So Google reads the title tag as an important meta tag when displaying search results. So what are some other tags you might see inside the head? Well, there are two really important ones that you'll almost definitely see at some point, if not in every single web page. The first is the link tag. And with the link tag, sometimes you'll see a, an attribute called rel. And the most common attribute you'll see is style sheet. And generally, if it's a style sheet, you'll also see an href attribute pointing towards styles.css or some other CSS file. This is how you add style sheets to a web page from a separate file. We've added some inline styles so far, especially in the list section and the table section. But for really complex styles, it's generally not possible or feasible to add inline style sheets without the HTML document getting really messy. So this is what you'll see when a web page is linking to a CSS file. And note that it's possible to link to multiple CSS files. In fact, further down in the course, we're gonna be linking to bootstrap.css and then we'll also be linking to our own style sheet. And when you do this, the style sheet that's linked to last overwrites any common styles from the style sheet that is linked to first. So generally, what you wanna do is you wanna add your own custom style sheet at the very end, because sometimes you might want to overwrite certain styles. And this is a really common mistake I see when starting out with web development is, you might be wondering, well, you know, I just added this extra style and Bootstrap also uses that style, but I wanna overwrite it and it's not overwriting. Well, check to make sure that your style is added at the very end so that it will overwrite the default style given by another style sheet like Bootstrap. Another tag you're likely to see in the head is the script tag. Note, the script tag is not a self-closing tag you have to have a beginning script tag and a closing script tag. Otherwise, some browsers will probably complain. And with the script tag, there are two things you can do. You can add JavaScript inside of the script tag. And this double slash is, is a comment in JavaScript. You can see brackets detected it as a comment and gave it the same color as this HTML comment up here. But if you don't wanna write inline scripts, you can also 
refer to another JavaScript file using the src source attribute inside the opening script tag. Note again that there's quite a bit of difference between the script tag and the link tag because the link uses href whereas the script uses source. So keep in mind links and script tags are the exact opposite of each other. Links are self-closing, scripts need a closing tag. Links use href, scripts use source. Where they are similar is that the source property, similar to an image, can link to an external JavaScript file, jQuery.com slash jQuery.min.js. Note the ending file being a .js file there. This is actually not the URL, by the way. This is definitely not how you add jQuery to your, to your HTML projects. And the source tag can also link to local JavaScript files, like hello world.js. Similarly, even with the href, you can have the href be referring to an external CSS file hosted out on the internet using the HTTP URL, or you can just reference it to a local file. So this is a good point in time to talk about, well, what exactly is a CSS file? What exactly is CSS? And what exactly is JavaScript? And how does it relate to HTML? So at this point, let's open up our web browser and it's taken me to the Google default search engine page. So let's talk about which parts of this page are CSS and which parts of this use JavaScript. So note that when we created our input box in a previous lesson on forms, our input was pretty plain. It didn't have this blue border when we moused over it. It didn't have this icon search by voice. It didn't have a lot of little styling elements that Google has added into their search bar. That is CSS. The presentation of a web page is CSS. Similarly, when we added our image, it wasn't center aligned on the page. It just followed a default setting of being to the left of the page, similar to how text renders by default in a web browser. So CSS adds some styling to a page and some pretty advanced styling too. It's very customizable. You can center images. You can change the border of an input when it's active, but it still doesn't handle what happens when a user does something on a web page. That's where JavaScript comes in. So when I search for something, note that as soon as I searched, Google was able to read my text and provide suggestions on what my search should be about. Similarly, also note that when I started searching for something, the Google logo and search bar disappeared. That involves JavaScript. The search suggestions involve JavaScript. Also, when I actually complete my search and I'm taken to a web page, my search results page, all of these search results are actually rendered using JavaScript that passes in variables to HTML and CSS. Because whenever you work with data, CSS and HTML can't really handle that very well. CSS and HTML give us the information, show us how it looks, and can style it really well for us. But whenever you're working with data, that's where you need to work with a more complete programming language like JavaScript in order to really show some data in a way that users can read. Now again, JavaScript is out of the scope of this course, but even without knowing JavaScript, we can still take advantage of this script tag and do some really interesting things. And I'll show you some examples of that in an upcoming video. For now, that's everything you really need to know that's essential about what goes into the head tag.